I attempted to conquer the Gala region with only a single Delmize. Apart from its base 40 speed, it's actually pretty well-rounded and has the odd advantage of having technically three stab types thanks to its Steelworker ability. But Grass Ghost isn't the best typing defensively, so we're going to have some massive issues dealing with Kabu, Melanie, Piers, and Leon's Charizard. I can almost guarantee it. So right off the bat, we actually have a bit of a tough decision here. Do we start off with Grookey or Sobble? Normally, I don't pick Sobble because, I mean, it's a disgrace of a Pokemon, but picking Sobble means that Hop will have Cinderace. But if we go Grookey, then we get the Miracle Seed early, which boosts our Grass-type moves, which will be really helpful seeing as we don't get a physical Grass move until level 64. Now, before you say anything about giving myself an advantage over Hop, eventually he's gonna give his Inteleon Ice moves to have that advantage over me, and Leon, the champion, will have Cinderace, which can hit us really hard with Pyro Ball. So ultimately, I decided to go with Grookey because the day I pick Sobble will be the day that I genuinely die. So I bred a Delmize and transferred it over at level 1, and we actually got a sassy nature for it, which raises our special defense and lowers our speed. This is a great nature for us, since we get Gyro Ball pretty early on, and special defense is Delmize's weaker defensive stat. Also, since we transferred over this Delmize, it looks like it does indeed get boosted experience, but I've already decided to battle as few trainers as possible, so if anything, this will just make grinding less tedious and a lot quicker. Seeing as we have a Fire, Ghost, Ice and Dark type gym in relatively quick succession, we're going to need to grind a lot. Milo was incredibly easy, even though we didn't have any way to hit his Pokemon super effectively. But since he can't do anything to us, since he only has normal and grass type moves, all we got to do was set up growths and rapid spins, and we took out Gossiflor. But I did get a little cocky, and I tried not Dynamaxing as his Eldegoss came out, but after critting us with a max overgrowth, yeah, I, I, I panicked a little bit and I Dynamaxed which allowed us to take Eldegoss out with a max strike. Um, so I regret to inform you of this, but <laughs> we actually lost to a member of Team Yell. On the bridge at Route 3, we got hit pretty hard by a snarl by the first Grunt's Thievil, and then we got thrown into the second fight without being healed in the process. So after the second Grunt's Sableye flinched us with Astonish, we went down. We were successful on our second attempt, though. As you can imagine, Nessa was incredibly easy since we have the type advantage, but I was a bit cautious of Dreadnaw, seeing as it does have max darkness. Thanks to Mega Drain, Goldeen, Aracuda, and Gigant's Max Dreadnought were taken down, even though we lost half our health to a max darkness. On the second day of this stream, I really hit the jackpot with some TRs, because Liquidation, Shadow Ball, and Power Whip were all purchasable in the wild area, so I did a bunch of raids to be able to afford them. I'm not going to give them to Delmize right away, because I want to see if we can handle certain roadblocks without them, so I kept them safe in the bag for right now. Speaking of Roblox, did I tell you that Team Yell genuinely scares me in this run? Yeah, by the time we get to Gallarmine 2, Team Yell starts having actually really big threats like Linoon with Night Slash and Thievil with Snarl, so Delmize actually went down to the one double battle we had. But since we have Hop as our partner, we should be fine, right? He's, he, he's got the intuition to use the right moves. Right? Marnie can be a bit of an issue too, seeing as she uses dark types herself. She starts off with a Crow Gunk, but it seems like her only move that she can hit us with is Sucker Punch, so why I didn't just set up growths until it ran out of Sucker Punches, I, I don't know why I didn't do that. I instead set up three and took it out with a Gyro Ball. Scraggy is out next, and it did next to no damage with Beat Up, so we took it down with a few Mega Drains. Last out is more Pico, and it seems that using Bite expresses her feelings. Is she stuck in some kind of modern day Avril Lavigne fever dream or something? Thing. Anyway, we took her down with a Mega Drain, but Bite did some pretty nasty damage to us. I'm actually really scared to see what kind of damage she does when it gets Aura Wheel in Hangry Mode. Now, I know you're all probably thinking that this run has been relatively easy so far, and it's had its ups and downs, but here is immediately where the run starts to get more difficult. At our current level, we only have Grass, Normal, Steel, and Ghost moves and none of them will do a ton of damage to Kabu. And we're going to be at a severe disadvantage here because of Burns from Will-O-Wisp and his Arcanine having Intimidate, lowering our attack by one stage. I decided to try fighting Kabu with what we currently had, but it did not go well as you can imagine. We didn't even get past Nine Tails. Will-O-Wisp cripples us just way too much, and the damage we take from Ember and Fire Spin spelt disaster almost immediately. We tried again, but I didn't put Liquidation on just yet. Instead, I got the TM for Bulldoze in the wild area. I also gave Delmize a Rostberry to prolong our burn ever so slightly. 
Bulldoze did great damage the first time, but sadly it didn't lower Ninetales' speed enough for us to outspeed before it tried to burn us again. So after getting burnt, Bulldoze doesn't take it out. On the bright side, we did get to Arcanine on this run, but there was no possible way for us to get the Scent to Scorch. Our other options here are to either grind and overlevel, which I don't have the patience for, or use the Liquidation TR that we have. So to try and finish this as soon as possible, I gave Delmize Liquidation and tried Kabu again. There's actually a ton of strategies that goes into this. So he sends out Ninetales and I immediately Dynamax and go for Max Geyser. Not only does this do massive damage here, seeing as it's a super effective move using our far superior attacking stat, but the side effect of Max Geyser is that it sets up the rain. Rain lowers the damage of all incoming fire moves, which will make us survive potential hits a lot better, as well as strengthening our subsequent outgoing water type moves on our end. Luckily, Ninetales actually missed Will-O-Wisp, which is big for us as it gets taken down by a Max Geyser. Arcanine's out next, and we use up our Rostberry as it goes for a Will-O-Wisp. Our rain-boosted Max Geyser takes it out. Scorch comes out, and it does outspeed us, hitting us with a G-Max Centiferno, which does set Fire Spin up around us, but it didn't do a lot of damage, thankfully. Unfortunately for us, Max Geyser doesn't take out Scorch, and we lose our Dynamax, so I was really worried that we'd need to do this fight again, but thankfully, his G-Max Centiferno took us down to 16 HP and we take it down with a liquidation. I know we only did that in three attempts, but that could have genuinely been a lot worse. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, wow, so uh, y you had some issues with Kabu, you must have had some issues with Alistair, right? No, Hop was an absolute nightmare in Stoan's side. This is the point of the game where Hop starts to change his team around and he just had to have a Cramorant, didn't he? We have nothing to hit Cramorant super effectively, and the only move we could use is Rock Slide, and we can't get that right now. So we just have to grind. But the reason why he's so obnoxious is because Cramorant just absolutely ruins everything thanks to its Gulp Missile ability. Whenever it uses Surf or Dive, it comes back with an Aracuda or a Pikachu in its mouth, depending on its health, and it launches it at you whenever you deal damage to it. And if it hits you with Aracuda, it lowers your physical defense. But if it hits you with Pikachu, it paralyzes you. We could have beaten him on a few temps, but we got ruined by Paralysis and lowered defense. Now you might be thinking to yourself, well, why don't you just give Delmize a Cherry Berry to get rid of Paralysis? <laughs> well, dear comment, I did, but Hop's AI, which was so bad in the past, must have been on his A game because he would start off fights with Pluck eating our Cherry Berry. But it doesn't end there, because we literally could have lost on our successful attempt because of Hop's Cobra. It has the move Brutal Swing, and it brought us to 7 HP using it. So you'd think Hop would probably go for that move again to take us out, right? Well, he went for Dig instead, and it left us with one HP. Thankfully, we were able to heal up nicely with a Giga Drain while he takes out his Toxel, but we just take it down with a Bulldoze, and Drizzle went down too, thanks to some Giga Drains. That battle was obnoxious. Before fighting Alistair, I decided to go stop off in Turfield to pick up Brutal Swing for myself. Our next ghost move that we get isn't until level 44, and it's Shadow Ball. It's a great move, but it doesn't use our superior offensive stat. Since Ghost and Dark hit the same types super effectively, I got rid of Astonish for Brutal Swing. Alistair was actually surprisingly very easy to my amazement. Delmize was able to outspeed and take out both Yamask and Cursula, taking them down with Giga Drain and Brutal Swing respectively. But Mimikyu was the sole reason why I kind of regretted getting rid of Astonish, since its fairy typing neutralizes Brutal Swing. I decided Liquidation would be the better move to use, since it's a stronger move and we don't get stabbed from either move anyway, but Mimikyu hits us hard with a plus two Shadow Sneak before we Dynamax and take it out with a Max Geyser as his Gengar comes out. Now, here I am anticipating him to go for the G-Max Terror. Super effective, he gets stabbed from it, it hits us on our weaker defense stat, so I'm preparing that I gotta come back and fight him again. No, Alistair decides to go for Max Darkness, which, yes, is super effective, but he doesn't get stabbed from it, and it doesn't hit our weaker defense stat because it's normally the move Payback. So we survived a Max Darkness, and we returned the favor, taking out Gigantamax Gengar with our own Max Darkness. Opal was an absolute cakewalk. Just about everything went down to a heavy slam. Mawile could have been a little difficult thanks to Intimidate, but we were able to take it down with a Max Quake. Without much assistance from her questions, Weezing, Mawile, Togekiss, and Gigantamax 
alchemy were taken down easily. So you remember how Hop had a somewhat balanced team right before we fought Alistair, and how we needed to fight him a few times in order to win? Yeah, uh, this next Hop battle was brutal. Even more brutal, I might add. He's got an incredibly balanced team at this point. He's got Trevenant, Heatmore, Boltund, Snorlax, and Inteleon, and all of them have something that can hit us relatively hard. So we were not going to have an easy time with this. On our first attempt, Trevenant confused us with Confuse Ray, but thankfully it didn't have an impact as we never hit ourselves. It goes down to a few brutal swings, but good lord, everything went to hell once Heatmore came out. Not only does it hit us super effectively with Fire Lash, but it also lowers our defense every time it hits us. So even though we can take it out with a single Bulldoze, Boltund comes out and takes us out with a crunch every single time. And the real issue here is that we're too slow. Our stats are all over or close to 100 at this point, but our speed is below 50. A Choice Scarf wouldn't even help us at this point since we take too much damage. And being locked into a single move would just make this battle even harder. We started this battle at, like, what, level 41, 42? We didn't emerge victorious until we were level 57, where we were finally able to outspeed Trevenant, not take too much damage from Heatmore and Boltund, and take Snorlax and Inteleon out. That was not fun in the slightest. I did not expect Hop to be the biggest roadblock in this challenge. I don't even want to think about what Leon's battle is going to be. This is terrifying. Even though we're practically at endgame levels, we did still have to attempt Melanie a few times, but it was mainly due to poor plays on my part. Frostmoth and Darmanitan go down pretty easily to an anchor shot, but I can't help but wonder why on every single attempt, she didn't bother to attack me. The real issue though is when she sends out Ice Q. To avoid its Ice Face ability, I hit it with Giga Drain, but it doesn't quite knock it out. So Ice Q would then retaliate with an Icy Wind, resulting in us being outsped by it, taking more damage from Freeze Dry now. By this point, we've taken too much damage, and then Lapras comes out, naturally outspeeds us, and then sets up Aurora Veil with G-Max Residence before we can even lay a hit on it. On our second attempt, a Max Overgrowth leaves it with a sliver, but then I stupidly went for a Max Knuckle, meaning that it took no damage because of Ice Face, putting us in the exact same position as last time. After leveling up a few levels, a special Max Overgrowth takes Ice Q out in one hit, and we're able to take out Lapras in two Max Knuckles. That wasn't too bad of a battle, but she could have been much worse if her Frostmoth and Darmanitan had actually done something. We have another hot battle immediately after her, but thankfully he's much easier since his team is a lot less balanced. We did have to fight him a second time though because Dub will hindered us too much with Growl, so by the time Corviknight came out, we did too little damage, and we got taken down by a few drill packs and crunched by Snorlax. On the second attempt, however, he goes for Defense Curl instead, but since we're hitting it with Giga Drain, it didn't matter. Corviknight and Snorlax both went down to Brick Breaks, Inteleon went down to Giga Drain, and Pinkurchin went down to Bulldoze. That fight wasn't too bad. I'm feeling a lot more confident about the semifinals right now. As worried as I was about Team Yell on Route 9 and the Marnie fight outside of Spike Myth, they were actually pretty easy. Piers, though, was a nuisance. This was actually the most difficult gym we've had this entire run. Not like that's very surprising. The other gym leaders were more manageable because we get at least Dynamax and get the benefits from using some of our moves, but we can't do that here. He starts off with Scrafty, but even though we're 20 levels above him with the Expert Belt, a Brick Break still doesn't take it down in one hit. He hits us with Sand Attack, but then he hits us with Payback, and even at the lowest base power, it still did a hefty chunk to us. After taking it down, he sends out Malamar, and this thing was the bane of my existence. This thing lives just about every and any hit I throw at it and retaliates back with hard-hitting moves like Night Slash and Foul Play. We can get to Obstagoon on rare occasions, but we're just too slow to even stand a chance at that point. I wasn't able to beat Hears until I was level 75. If it's this bad, I don't even want to know what fighting Leon is going to be like. That just seems like it's going to be a disaster. On our victorious attempt, we were able to outspeed Scrafty and knock it out with a Brick Break. Malamar brought us to about half HP with a Foul Play, and then brought us lower with a Night Slash, but it goes down to two Anchor Shots. Obstagoon is out, and takes us dangerously low with Throat Chop, but we go for Giga Drain to try and save as much health as we can. He brings us low again, and we take it out, bringing us to 63 HP, but I'm hesitant because Skuntank still has the potential to take us out with Snow or Sucker Punch. Skuntank comes out, and it goes for Screech, but it misses. Anchor Shot takes him out, but I totally forgot about his Aftermath ability, but it left us with 14 HP. Raihan actually went pretty well, all things considered, but we did lose our first
first attempt. Flygon and Gigalith went down pretty easily, but of course I asked to not get burned by Sandaconda, and that's exactly what happens. We actually did still have a shot at winning thanks to our Max Knuckle raising our attack, but the turn we would have taken him out, his Gigant's Max Duraludon raised his defense with Max Steel Spike, so we couldn't take it out, unfortunately. So we came really close. All we need to do is just not get burned. And there's no need for a Rossberry either. We need the help of that expert belt. Thankfully, that's actually exactly what happened the second time around. Flygon, Gigalith, Sandaconda, and Duraludon went down easily. The majority of Winden was actually pretty easy, seeing as we we're practically 30 levels above where we should be. But that doesn't mean we didn't have our issues. Marnie was pretty easy thanks to Brick Break and Heavy Slam, but unfortunately, due to Torment, we had to alternate moves every turn, resulting in us delaying our victory. Because I went for Liquidation on Toxicroak, even though it's immune to water moves thanks to Dry Skin. Other than that, Lifebird, Scrafty, Toxicroak, Warpico, and her Gigantamax Grimmsnarl went down. Hop, Oleana, BD, and Nessa were all first attempt sweeps. Not much to talk about there, but surprisingly, we did actually lose to Alistair this time. He wasn't too hard, we could have defeated him our first try, but his Poltygeist actually hit us critically for the first time, and Chandelure also burnt us, so our first attempt did not go very well at all. Thankfully, we threw a Rostberry on and swept him easily. Dusk Noir, Chandelure, Poltygeist, Cursula, and Gigantamax Gengar all went down to a brutal swing. Raihan was still pretty easy, but oh boy, did it not start off well. He starts off with Torkoal, and I stupidly went for an anchor shot on it, allowing him to hit us with a yawn, and then put us to sleep the next turn. After waking up, we took some massive damage thanks to Turtonator using Shell Trap. We were thankfully able to heal off a lot of that damage thanks to Giga Draining Flygon, but after that, Gudra and Duraludon went down pretty easily. Rose was very easy too, seeing as the only member of his team not weak to Brick Break was a Scavalier. But once that went down, Ferrothorn, Kling Clang, Berserker, and his Gigantamax Kaparaja all went down in one sweep. Now it's time for the battle that you've probably all been waiting for, the battle against Leon. This is actually one of the toughest fights we had, seeing as we actually need to be more strategic with where we Dynamax. His team hits incredibly hard, and we need as much support as possible. Ideally, we need him to go for Aegislash, then Dragapult and Haxorus, one right after another, into Seismitoad, then Cinderace, and then into Gigantamax Charizard. But of course, we're a grass type, so the minute we take down Aegislash, his first instinct is to go into Cinderace. And the thing that really worries me is us losing thanks to taking too much damage from G-Max Wildfire. So in order to minimize that damage, we need to do exactly what we did with Kabu and go for Max Geyser in order to set up the rain. But if he sends out Cinderace immediately after Aegislash, then our last turn of rain is as he sends in Charizard. So if we can't take it out in one hit, we lose. But if we go for the wrong move on Haxorus, like using Max Quake to boost our special defense, it doesn't go down in one hit and we lose that crucial turn of rain. As you can imagine, this did not go the way that we planned the first time. It didn't go the way we planned for a multitude of attempts. You know what level we had to be in order to win? 92. So the moveset I decided to use was Giga Drain to heal from Seismitoad, Phantom Force to hit Aegislash and Dragapult super effectively while also taking out Haxorus in one hit with Max Phantasm, Rock Slide, and Liquidation. The attempt before our successful one could have definitely won had we not missed Rock Slide seeing as it's quite effective, but Liquidation only does double damage but also gets that 50% boost from the rain, so at the time I wasn't quite sure which move would do more damage. Turns out it was Rock Slide in the end though. At our level, we're able to outspeed Aegislash and take it down with a Phantom Force, which thankfully would hit through King's Shield even if he went for it. After he falls, he sends out Cinderace, and for some reason as we got higher in level, he stopped going for Pyro Ball and started hitting us with Acrobatics, which did less damage. No matter, we were still able to Dynamax, hit it with a Max Geyser, taking out Cinderace in one hit while setting up the rain in the process. Dragapult is out next, but it doesn't really do too much with Shadow Ball, so it falls to a Max Phantasm. Out next is his Haxorus, and it hits us actually pretty hard with an Outrage, but again, it also falls to a Max Phantasm. As we lose our Dynamax, he sends out Seismitoad, but we're able to take it out in one hit, while also healing pretty considerably from Giga Drain. Outlast is his Ace, Charizard, and it hit us with a G-Max Wildfire, and thanks to the rain, we were able to survive. And even in past attempts, sometimes he would even go for Max Airstream instead, and we could live one of those too. But thankfully, we're able to retaliate with a critical hit liquidation, winning us the run. So that run was exactly as I had imagined. 
really easy early game, but it got increasingly harder throughout due to the gyms that had a massive type advantage against us, which is why I wanted to do this run in shield specifically. But even though I did allow myself to Dynamax, this challenge was still really difficult. I did not expect to have as much trouble with Hop's more diverse teams at all, but I had to overlevel for every single one of them. And while I imagined I'd have problems with peers, I didn't expect to have as much of a problem because I was so overleveled. But this was still a really fun run because of Delmize's versatility, and I definitely recommend this run if you're looking for a good solo challenge. I'd love to see if you guys could actually beat this at an earlier level too. If you guys enjoyed that run, be sure to like the video, comment down below, and subscribe and follow me on Twitch.